All right. So uh, I think the the more correct way to introduce myself is I am the least uh, qualified person to be up here talking about data sketches to all of you. Um, so uh, keep that in mind as we go. But I also think that that gives me a unique position to talk about what it means for someone who's just coming into data sketching or just discovering it. Um, so anyway, let's continue. So I work at Heroku. How many of you know what Heroku is? All right, cool. Uh, for those of you who don't know, we're a platform as a service. We, uh, you can visit Heroku.com and learn more, but I, won't, I don't have enough time to go over too much of it. So thank you for having me. Uh, and I want to say this in a way that all the academics in the uh, room can understand uh, having me in the proceedings of the first annual international symposium of data science held by aggregate knowledge. For the rest of us, I'd like to say that this is a rad conf. Yeah, all right. So let's get to it. Uh, an academic team invents a data sketch. Huzzah, right? Here they are, they're very proud, but now they have two problems. Let me explain. Lemma one, they must prove it works as advertised to their peers using in-depth proofs and an academic language that us that aren't in their circles understand at all. It usually looks something like this. And then there's the submission and acceptance dance that looks a little something like this. And if it's recognized and accepted, then they celebrate because they deserve it. It's no easy task to do this. Uh, it usually looks something like this. They're like, booyah, yeah, that's right. I just got 90th percentile without having to keep all my data in memory or something like along that, or they have some cake. Uh, you know, I mean, this is great though, because this means that there are checks and balances in place for us who don't really like live in their circles or like community, like work in those circles too closely. Um, we can still trust that, you know, that these things are correct because these guys are, you know, checking each other and making sure things are correct. And so when I grab one of these papers and I see that a lot of people have looked at this and, you know, that it's made it through some steps of stuff, I'm like, all right, I know this isn't complete bullshit. So I can at least like, you know, start reading in this and know I'm not wasting my time. So lemma two, this is the second problem. No one is using it yet, right? It's just theory, for real. Somewhere an engineer is frustrated though. He's trying to build a histogram based on a large amount of data that he has and he realizes, or she realizes that, and this is actually something I just worked on, um, realizes that like bin widths, ever evolving bin widths, like how, like, how do you do that, right? Like, I can't, I don't want to make, like, multi, like, go read, like, first thing, Wikipedia. Well, first you want to sort all your data and make, like, three scans over it, and then here's, like, some algorithms you can use, like Sturgis formula and blah, 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 and it's just like, ah, uh -uh, that's going to take way too much time uh, in, in terms of computation and space. So then I begin doing something like this. I Google histogram data streams, bin width, something like that, and then I Google and Google until I'm bleeding uh, from the eyes, usually the nose, um, and then I see a PDF, right? Like in Google, like, you know, when you see like PDF, you're like, all right, this is legit. This is like some academic shit right here. And so, right, so you're like, boom, I think I figured it out. And then the engineer reads the data sketch. And this is usually how it goes. First, I look at the abstract. And I think most of us, after talking at dinner last night, I realized that they all kind of about do the same thing. You read the abstract. And so you kind of paraphrase in your head and you're like, yo, this sick thing creates and evolves histogram buckets over data streams in one pass. And you're like, oh, you know, you're like, yes, this is what I was looking for. And then you begin to read and you see things like from lemma four, substitute F sub R greater than min, 100 max rewriting frequencies and their zip, uh, Zipian form yields, blah, 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 blah. And you're like, what? Like, I have no idea what this means. And so, because this is the way engineers think. We think in terms of code, not in terms of mathematical symbols and lemmas and all this stuff. Um, and so we kind of skip through the formalities, you know, it's like skip a bit, brother, you know, like let's get to the good stuff here. And so then I start seeing something like this and I'm like, yes, braces, indentation, here it is. Like do this, do that, add this, and then just redistribute the regular buckets to equalize their count. And I'm like, seriously? And like this thing actually says that, like I'll blow it up for you. Like it says like, this is their programming language. Like, and so I have, I'm like completely lost. Like, I mean, so this is usually about what I feel like. Actually, I think this is a young picture of Sam Kinison, by the way. Um, 
And then I go to this, back to confusion, and then rage, and then confusion, and then eventually I'm under my desk in the fetal position, and I'm just like, like, you know, it's, it, I don't know, it's a mess. A lot of my coworkers all hear me just like, oh. Um, so anyway, so another quick example. Uh, this came from one of the things that I implemented. Like, if you look at this code, this is much different than the English. I mean, it's better. It looks more like code, right? Like, it looks more like some kind of language we might use as engineers. But the problem is, is that it says R sub zero is initialized to zero, and then for I one to S, okay, I get that. If V sub I is less than V, okay, I get that. But then R sub I equals R I minus one plus G sub I. What's G, right? So I'm kind of like, I'm looking through this, and I'm trying to think through this, and I, and I realize after a long time, I finally realize that R sub zero, blah, 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 R sub blah, is actually, they're just saying this, R equals R plus G, like, that's it, right? But, like, why were they using the same notation? I don't know. I asked all my friends that had some, like, you know, background in, in academic dealing with these papers, and they're like, we still don't know why we do this. So, and obviously, I'm just asking myself, so what is G, right? And I'm, again, confused and a little, a little taken aback. And I just want to say, like, this is a, this is kind of, to me, this is a real problem. Uh, you know, in all seriousness, like you, as academics, you guys are working really, really hard. You're coming up with some just really mind-blowing things. And then there's the rest of us who really want to utilize what you're using. And like, we read these abstracts and we're like, yes, this is, this is exactly what we want. Like, I need this like now, right? Like, but I, I don't have eight months to like really absorb every little detail of what's going on. So usually a lot of what I see is my, especially my coworkers, when I present them with these papers, they just look it over. Like they, it just gets overlooked actually is the way I should be putting, like they don't look it over, they overlook it. Um, they just, they're just like, I don't know, no, we'll just put all this stuff in memory. It'll go in Redis. We'll sort it. It'll take an hour and then it'll be fine. Right? Like we just don't, we don't care. And they don't really get the bigger picture. Uh, has anyone ever tried to implement Paxos or read the Paxos paper? Does anyone understand like the Paxos like laid dormant for like, a really long time before someone like actually started putting it to practice and it wasn't until like the chubby paper that it became more of a mainstream kind of thing. Um, so how do we fix this? Uh, this is just my opinion, like my proposal here is, uh, is, is to be more accessible. One is I copied and pasted a lot of um, uh, email addresses from the tops of these papers and then send out an email and it takes like, and after like weeks of getting back and you guys are busy, I get that, right? But uh, it like, I, I, then found out that those were all the really old email addresses that no one ever checked anymore. So my questions were going into this black hole. Um, and also, don't invent pseudocode, please. Like, just stop doing that. Um, it's kind of lazy, and I hate to say that, but it is. I feel it kind of is um, because you just put so much hard work into the amount of intricate little detail and proofs and everything. And then I feel at the very end, they're like it looks kind of like this if you were to write some code, right? Like something like that anyway, submit, right? So um, that may not be the case, but it's, it seems like. Um, I also recommend trying to use a syntax uh, and semantics that are close to some popular languages that are used simply. Uh, things that maybe in a language that is expressive, has garbage collection, or at least pretend that you're, you know, something has garbage collection. So we're not caught up in the details of, of freeing memory and allocating memory and trying to do it the most efficient way. What we're really, and, and cause what we're really trying to get at here is like, we just, we just want to see like what the idea is, like, what does this look like in, in, in a language that has, you know, branches and conditions and stuff. And like, um, so, but keep it complete, but focused. So try to make it, you know, like try to be as focused as possible, but also like try not to just like leave things out like, oh, G is this thing that, you know, was there at one point, right? Like it's this thing you should just know about, right? Um, so maybe some examples are like Java, Python, Go. Those are languages that like whenever I read through them, they're pretty easy. They're statically typed. So there's no real crazy magic going on. I don't have to like try and figure things out. Um, try to avoid C and C++. Again, they're not garbage collected. When I do see people using, say, when I do see papers that use C and C++, like I see like double pointers and like all this stuff and it just gets, I mean, like just avoid that, right? Like it, it, because like then we have to like go through and like start looking at like trying to figure out what their memory management model is within this little tiny program versus really focusing on the problem that the, the thing is trying to solve instead. So it could compile and run. That'd be really cool. Um, <laughs> That'd be nice. I'd appreciate that, but I'm not gonna like. I'm not gonna like go that far, right? Like I know I'm asking a lot already. Um, so that's uh, quick. That's my solution to go from confusion to right on happiness. So anyway, thank you.
Any questions? So I thought maybe I should, you know, I, I thought about touching on uh, another subject, which, which is that I, I do get that, you know, in these papers that these these papers are really like men in the audience. Yeah. The fact that they use two right. Uh huh. Okay. I just yeah. I think that there's like a notation for like for for the submission and going through the the process that that the, you know you go through for these things, and then there's then there's the other audience, right? Like there's two different audiences. I I I I described it as two problems, right? But what I was really trying, I think, what I was really trying to say was there's two different audiences, right? So, and that would maybe thinking about the other guys over here would be helpful. But thanks. <laughs> yes. Would I read that? Yes. I've been given that code and it didn't compile. <laughs> and it was really hard to follow. I think PhDs wrote it. No, I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. Come on. Come on. Ah, seriously. No. <laughs> yeah. Alright, so on the access topic, if you Right, which is really interesting. It was I, that was that was a fun paper to read. Yeah. That that would be that would definitely be. I don't know. I think it's yet to be seen if that's. I mean, like Raft is the first paper I've seen where they actually do that. Right, like. Like we're going to write an algorithm, but when we'll, and we'll prove that it's correct. But what we're really trying to prove is that it's easy to understand, right? And but there was there had already been something in place, and like there had been Paxos in practice, and in practice, this is generally how people wound up. Like this was the basically how people wound up using Paxos. They used multi Paxos. They had a log. They had you know one leader, and then they like you know and all this, and so they encoded all that into the algorithm, and they were like, this is this is a complete Paxos. But like that's not what we're trying to describe here, right? And so, I don't know. It's interesting. I mean, like the papers we're talking about here, like count men, all that. That's like you can do this, right? Like it's not necessarily has to be something that everyone can understand. But it's like, look, this is our first proof of concept. This is our thing. Like you know, we can we can do what what it is people want to do, you know. And then I feel, and then it seems to kind of like stop there. It keeps building on it, and then it doesn't really get much simpler for engineers who are just trying to come in and you know practice. So, I don't know. All right, that's it. Thanks.